Hi, I'm Tamir N6JJ and welcome back to my Reham Radio channel. In this video I will show you 5 tips that can change the way you are using FT8 from an FT8 operator to an FT8 advanced operator. Ready? Let's get started! How to get attention in a pileup? So you are in a pileup, interesting DX, lots of stations are calling. Or maybe you heard your last station you need for your DXCC or work called State Award. But that station cannot hear you because the other stations that are calling have a stronger signal than you. How you can try to get attention of that station? Instead of transmit and receive on the same frequency, try to move the red U-shaped marker to a free space on the waterfall. Why is that? Moving only the red marker will set your TX frequency to a quieter frequency while the RX frequency will remain the same. With this approach, you command the attention of the target station because your call sign will show on the station screen in red. Remember that the target station is still monitoring the whole band and it will mark your call sign in red even in a different frequency. And all of that without competing with other stronger stations. Get more chances with weak stations. When you want to call CQ, monitor the band first for a few periods. Try to find and understand which periods have stronger stations and which periods have weaker stations. Why is that? To receive weak station signals, you want a quieter receive period. You want to avoid interference from stronger stations when receiving. Monitor your TX frequency. You are operating, doing a few QSOs in a row, or maybe calling CQ for some periods. From time to time, take a break. Why? The reason is that you want to check, or to monitor, the status of your TX frequency and make sure it is still clear. It could be that at some point, another station, maybe stronger than yours, started to use the same TX frequency as well, and you want to avoid that. If needed, just move or QSY to a free frequency. Pay attention to the green marker. Most of the time people don't pay attention to the U-shaped green marker above the waterfall. Well, it makes sense because we see that the WSJTX is decoding the whole waterfall anyway. But it's not exactly like that and it's better for you to be familiar with how this actually works. The decoding process takes place at the end of the receive sequence. This process has two steps. First, it gives priority and decodes selected RX frequency and displays the message in the RX frequency window. Second, it decodes all the rest of the signals over the displayed frequency range. How that can help us? For a weak DX, set the green marker on the DX frequency for a better signal reception and more chances to read its signals and know when to try to call it. On a busy frequency, we can see that the band activity windows is running very fast and if you want to follow a specific station, we can miss some lines by mistake. Setting the RX frequency will make sure that we can follow that specific station easily on the RX frequency window which will move much slower. Take the FT8 with you. You are waiting for your next DX or waiting for a specific state, country or grid that has invaded you for a long time. That takes time sitting at your shack and you cannot stay there all the time. Should you continue to sit and monitor for more hours or continue your life and leave the station with the feeling that you will Miss that station? Why not do both at the same time? Take the WSJTX with you. How? There is a special app for this purpose called WSJTX Monitor, developed by Fiotech. With this app, you can leave your station, do whatever you want at home, and you can still monitor all the WSJTX activity running on the screen of your smartphone. More than that, 
You can set filters to monitor only the station that you are looking for or filter out anything you want to skip. In addition, with the latest release, you can set alerts for a specific station, prefix, country or continent and your smartphone will alert you on that. The configuration is very simple. Let me show you how to configure that in a minute. Open the Google Play and search for WSJT and you will find the first one, the WSJTX monitor. Install. Once installed, open the application. Running. And now we are ready for the configuration. From the upper right corner, choose the menu and choose Setup. You see that the application gave us the IP of our device. Now let's move to the WSJTX on the computer. Go to File, Settings, and under the Reporting tab, you will find the IP of the UDP server. Instead of the default IP, enter the IP from our device. Choose OK. And there you go. Let's wait a few seconds and that's it. You see that everything that is running now on the computer immediately shows on the application as well. And all of that in real time. Now let's set an alert. Go again to the menu and choose alerts. Let's set an alert for a specific country. I will choose list all countries. Then let's find Antarctica. OK. Next. You can choose if to get the alert as a sound, vibrate, choose whatever you want and finish. And that's it. Any time that the application will find a call sign from Antarctica, we will get an alert on that. Talking with one of the developers, I learned that there are cool new features that will be released soon, like the option to sort based on SNR, distance, azimuth or frequency, and for the grid collectors, even set alerts for grid squares. So it's a good idea to follow these guys at Fairtech for updates. As for now, it is available only for Android, but they are aware of the need for iPhone version, so check again in a few months. And now, let's move for the fun part. And that's it, this is the fun part. Sitting at the backyard and I'm not going to miss Antarctica anymore. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so, please subscribe here. Thank you and 73.